In this class, we will discuss the key statistical concept. A correlation is a measure of the relationship between two variables or two sets of scores, and it indicates the strength and direction of that relationship. To compute a correlation, we collect scores from a group of individuals on two tests. So, Imagine we're interested in determining if there's a relationship between stress and life satisfaction. We would get a score for individuals on a test of life satisfaction and a score for the same individuals on a test of stress so that each individual provides a pair of scores. Three key terms in a discussion of correlation is relationship, direction, and strength. By relationship, I mean that two variables share a trend or that they co-occur. It means that as one variable changes in value, the other variable also tends to change. Notice I use the word trend. A trend means that not every uh, pair of scores in a set of scores will conform to the pattern, but just that a general trend exists. If there is no trend, there is no correlation or no relationship between variables or the set of scores. By direction of relationship, I mean whether the correlational trend is positive or negative. For a positive correlation, the trend is that when scores on one variable increase, scores on the other also increase. For a negative or inverse relationship, as scores on one variable increase, the trend is for scores on the other variable to decrease. By strength of relationship, I mean how pervasive the trend is. The more pervasive, the stronger the correlation. If there is no general trend in the set of scores, there is no correlation. The correlation uh, between two variables is generally expressed using a correlation coefficient, which is a decimal that ranges in value from negative 1 to positive 1. Uh, when the correlation coefficient is either a negative one or positive one, it indicates a perfect relationship, or that for every change of one unit on one variable, there is a corresponding change for all scores on the other variable. The stronger the relationship, the closer the correlation comes to approaching either a negative one or po positive one. As discussed before, uh, the stronger the correlation, the more pervasive the trend for the two variables to co-vary. When a correlation equals zero, that indicates no relationship, or what, or what we will call state of independence, or that the two variables are orthogonal, or independent of each other. Correlation coefficients are generally presented in correlational matrix. On the next slide, we'll see a correlational matrix. So here's an example of a correlational matrix, uh, or sometimes what is called an intercorrelational matrix. Uh, and we, what we have reported are the correlations between four separate variables. The correlation, for example, between variable 1 and variable 2 is 0.38 and the correlation between variable 2 and 4 is 0.42. Note that the correlation of each variable with itself equals 1.00 and is listed on the diagonal of the matrix. Often uh, the diagonal is omitted from a correlational matrix in a uh, book or a research article. Note also that the correlations reported in the lower off-diagonal area of the matrix are not reported above the diagonal. This is because the upper portion of the matrix would be a mirror image of the lower portion of the matrix. Before going to the next slide, see if you can answer the following question. What pair of variables had the strongest relationship or correlation in this matrix? The answer is the correlation equal to negative 0.54 or the relationship between variables 2 and 3. Remember what determines the strength of a relationship is how far the correlation is from zero in either a positive or negative direction 
or how close the correlation comes to either a positive or negative one. The most important correlation coefficient is the Pearson correlation coefficient. And it is used uh, to measure correlation when both of the variables are measured using interval or ratio scales of measure. The uh, Pearson correlation is the mean or the average of the cross product of paired z-scores. And that is what is indicated in this formula you see on the slide. So let's see what that means. Imagine we take a sample of individuals and get scores on two variables, say a measure of the relationship satisfaction and a measure of life satisfaction. Uh, then we would transform their scores to z-scores by subtracting the mean of each score from the raw score for that person and uh, dividing um, by the standard deviation. And this would mean that everyone would now have two z-scores, one for each measure. In correlation, we multiply your z-score on one variable with your z-score on the other variable. We then sum all the cross products and or cross multiplications and divide by the number of participants uh, in the study. If you will recall from our previous class on the mean, we said that a mean is an average of a sum of scores divided by the number, number of scores. Thus the Pearson correlation is a type of mean. It is the mean of cross products. Please note the difference between the formula for the population correlation coefficient, which is divided by n, and a sample correlation coefficient, which is divided by n minus 1. Now, uh, let's use the formula for the Pearson correlation coefficient to understand correlation a little better. In the Pearson correlation coefficient, we transform all z-scores and then cross-multiply the z-scores for each individual. When we have a positive correlation, the trend is that positive z-scores for one variable tend to be paired with positive z-scores for the other variable, which is to say that the trend is that when an individual scores above the mean on one variable, they tend to score above the mean on the other variable. It also means that when an individual has a negative score on one variable, meaning they score below the mean, the trend is them, for them to have a negative score or a score, negative z-score or a score below the mean on the other variable. For a negative correlation, the trend is the opposite, namely that positive z-scores on one variable will be paired with negative z-scores on the other variable. The more pervasive the trend is across all pairs of scores in the set of scores, the stronger the relationship and the closer the correlation coefficient will come to either negative or positive one. When there is no correlation between variables, a positive z-score on one variable is just as likely to be paired with a positive or negative z-score on the other variable. So in other words, there is no trend.